I like being in a place where, you know, you can watch an animal go by, you can see the leaves fall and change. I find that being indoors saps a lot of the creativity that you have in life. So we've always had a very strong appreciation for the outdoors. We spent a lot of time trying to go to the mountains or trying to explore different places. He's always been kind of a happy person. He's very much a glass is half full kind of guy. And he was always someone who didn't really care what other people thought of him. As a little boy, he used to whistle a lot in the parking lot and it would embarrass me to no end. <laughs> but I think those were all things that really helped him as an adult adjust to a very different life than he'd expected. You know, I was raised to be independent, manage your own care and life and space. He took his schoolwork and jobs and other things seriously but uh, he knew how to have a lot of fun. You know, CSU was a good school for me. So I was interested in going to a school that uh, had landscape architecture, because that's what I wanted to study. You know, and I was only there for a few months before my injury. I was injured October 10th, 2004. We thought, oh, it would be fun to go out and, uh, and videotape us playing around in the leaves. Well, I'm going to rake up the leaves and climb up into a tree. And I said, oh, I'm going to do a flying squirrel. It's essentially a belly flop. When I landed, I probably blacked out for a second or two. But I could hear people in the background talking. But you obviously aren't moving. And it's a very scary time because you're not sure what's going on. It's a powerful moment. I got a, a call from my dad and he said, I have bad news and your heart just sinks. I knew he was paralyzed. And I think at that point I just kind of crumpled on the ground. He hadn't been specifically told that he was paralyzed yet. And he looked at me and he, he said, he said, I'm, I'm paralyzed, aren't I? And I said, yeah. That was hard, but it was unavoidable. And it was the reality. First, you don't know if you're going to get through the next hour, then you don't know if you're going to get through the next day, and then the next week, and then the next month. And eventually it becomes your new normal, your new reality. We had no idea what was involved with a spinal cord injury, you know, but they said, you know, we can get Colin into Craig Hospital in a few days. We didn't know Craig had existed at the time and were informed that there's a, one of the best spinal cord injury rehab hospitals just an hour south of where his accident had happened. My time at Craig with Colin was, it was really great actually in a terrible situation. The people who work there, you know, they, they, they're they also good with the patients and the families, and they let you know that there's life on the other side. I was not expecting to become such a part of the life there, um, but to this day, I still feel comfortable walking in there. And It's a community in which everyone has an understanding and a similar positive attitude and outlook in life. He was determined to go back to school. When he rolled through that door the second go round, he was ready to go. My brother and sister had both studied abroad when they were in college. You know, as I went through, went through school, I said, well, maybe it, there is an opportunity. And one day he said, I'm going to Australia. 
<laughs> I said, you are? How's that gonna work? <laughs> says, I don't have to worry about things because I've got plenty of people who do the worrying for me. <laughs> because I was also a student at the time, it would be easy for me to go along as a second caregiver, which he needed. You know what I took away is I can travel. I can do this. I can be away from my parents. After going to Australia, I stopped worrying about him. He has the job that I always wish I had. He works for the Park Service. He gets to do fantastic things and travel all over and see beautiful places. I was interested in landscape architecture because I thought it was a field in which I could spend a lot of time outside. You know, after my injury, I wasn't sure if I was still going to be able to do something like that. His big goal is to make national parks accessible, but not accessible in a way that takes away the beauty of the nature. So Colin and his colleagues, they travel to national parks, they assess the parks for what can make them more accessible, help upgrade trails, um, put trail markings so that individuals in chairs or with other disabilities will know what the trail access is like. He's very unique in that way because he has those experiences so he thinks of it from a first person perspective. When he when he does a job for his work it's with the context of how would I need to experience this to get the most out of this place. But there's still a lot of opportunities out there. There's one on the left here is about a two mile trail that's down southwest of Denver. It's in an area that's close to Roxborough State Park but it's a beautiful trail. Let's get I chose to reach out to the education department at Craig and said, hey, I think there's some, some knowledge and skills that a lot of the new patients are missing out on. So the idea of the class with Colin came along when another patient who had a, a different level injury than Colin actually had more function than Colin just said, if Colin can do all that, why can't I? They have a sip and puff sailboat, so I was able to control it all by sipping and puffing. Encourage sure. people to maximize what they can do and to use as much as the physical ability and mental capacity that they have. It's nice to see that other people are moving forward and other people are going to be that spark for the next person who gets an injury. challenging people's perceptions of people with disabilities, that helps us all. You know, we all benefit from that.